about pastors and being the divine rescue in our life, a particular scripture stood out to me uh, in Jeremiah 23, 3 and 4. And it says, And I'll gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries whither I've driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I'll set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. And that scripture really stood out to me in verse 4 about I'll set up shepherds over them. And I saw how God had assigned pastors into our life as our divine rescue. Um, and then those five characteristics of things that would, would happen to those that are submitted to those pastors and how that begins to unfold in our life. And it's been such a wonderful journey during these uh, last several years, since 2007, actually. Um, so as pastors, as I think about pastors and the divine rescue they've been in our life, uh, we came to pastors in 2007, and we knew a lot about the hype of church, and we knew a lot about the terminologies of faith, but we really didn't understand what faith was really all about or the principles that even governed it. Um, nor did we really understand what real church was really all about. Our concept was if you didn't shout and run and sweat, uh, if you didn't come wet out of service, you didn't have church. Um, wasn't always about the word, it was really about the hype, and that's what really began to help change our life. Uh, being under true pastors is that really begin to be taught the word of God. So in that, we experienced so many different testimonies over the years um, that God has done in our life. And the very first one, dramatic miracle for us was um, we had come, in, like I said, in 2007, and we had been trying to conceive for 12 years and uh, unable to do that. Darla was told she could not medically conceive. We had went through medical processes. We went through all types of different things, and they just said, look, your only option is adoption. And that wasn't what we had in our heart. Praise God for those that do it, but that's not what we had in our heart to do. Um, and so in August of 2008, we came to pastors. We asked them to come into agreement with us according to Matthew 18 and 19, which says, if any two would touch and agree concerning anything, we'd have whatsoever we asked. And so pastors came into agreement with us. And over the next year, we didn't see any change in Darla's body, but we kept our confession on the word of God and we never wavered. Um, and so then we ended up conceiving, which was such a miracle. Um, and then, and of course, in May of 2010, we gave birth to Carly. Uh, one of the other uh, points of testimony, which again was a divine rescue, is throughout the pregnancy, and not everybody knows this testimony, um, but we went into our, for our normal ultrasounds, and they had identified that Carly's organs were growing, her skull, her, her, her brain, her heart, and different things like that but she had no arms and she had no legs. And so the, the, the doctor ordered all kinds of additional ultrasounds. I think it was three or four additional ultrasounds. And I remember in the doctor's office grabbing a hold of her and I said, look, I don't want you to say nothing and I don't want you to do nothing. I just want you to ride on my faith because I knew that this wasn't beyond my measure because of what pastors have put in me at to that time. And so we just got on our confession of faith and hundreds of times, over that period of time, every time a thought would come or uh, the pressure would come about what she would look like or what wouldn't happen or the doctors even talking to us about aborting her, um, every single time I would say, Carly, I speak to your arms and to your legs and I command them to grow out and to be normal in the name of Jesus. And that was my response. And just over and over and over and over and over because of what pastors have put in us, and ultrasound after ultrasound after ultrasound, we never saw any changes in the natural, but we kept our confession of faith without wavering. Hebrews 10, 23. Um, and so on the very last ultrasound, we went in and the doctor was flipping back and forth between her notes. She was going from the first machine, uh, brought out uh, and out into the hallway, brought in a brand new machine. They tested Darla again, uh, Carly ultimately, uh, with the ultrasound, and what the report was is all the way up to this point, no growth, no arms, no legs. The last ultrasound, fully functional, normal arms and legs. Um, and again, divine rescue. If we would not have been here to hear the word of God from our pastors, never, never would have had the faith and knowing the principles of faith to be able to execute the plan of God for that. Um, so... <laughs> So wonderful, just on that alone was, was, would have been enough. Um, 
We also were at a time uh, in 2009 with no job. We had no other income in the family. Uh, we had to go on food stamps. We had no money in the bank, maxed out all of our credit cards. Uh, we're at the point of losing our cars. Um, and in the midst of all of that, we were offered a, a job at a worldwide ministry um, at a place that we had come from previously. Um, and to a, it was a comfortable place because it would have been easy for us to mark that as very spiritual. But here's the response that we had. And again, it was because of our pastors teaching us right. We said, we will not leave our man and woman of God. And I remember pastors telling us, and this was a rescue for me, is they said that was your test. That was your moment to leave, but you passed the test. And I remember, uh, vividly remember that. And I remember where I was at on the, on the parking lot when, when, when dad actually mentioned that to me. Um, so that again was another divine rescue in our life. And I remember uh, something that even pastors have mentioned from the pulpit before, standing in the grocery line on food stamps, not having enough money to even buy groceries for our family. We had to put things back. But I remember standing there and saying, Father, I trust you and I trust your word. But again, because pastors would have put in us, um, we were able to come through that. Um, so we ended up getting a job and everything was great and that was wonderful. But here's the thing, we never saw ourselves up until this point as business owners. We never saw ourselves as owning a home. Um, we had saw ourselves as getting by, but we never saw what God really had in store for us. And so, uh, we, like I said, we never owned a home, but we closed on our first home in November 2016. Um, again, divine rescue for our family. We never saw ourselves as business owners, but, being, but sitting underneath our pastors, our mindset began to be changed about what was possible. Um, and so we just, this month, completed 15 months of owning our own business. So again, divine rescue. Um, and again, just like I, the scripture I was reading before in Jeremiah 23, um, because we're submitted under true pastors, uh, we're seeing those five things manifesting in our life. Not saying that it's all perfect and everything is uh, fully manifested in all ways, but those things are working in our life. We're fruitful. We're increasing. The fear of God is being removed out of our life. The disappointments are being removed out of our life. And the lack is being removed out of our life because we're submitted underneath our pastors and that divine rescue that they've been in our life. So pastors, thank you for your obedience, for the repeated times that you've given your testimonies, for the example that you've been in our life. You set the pace and we're reaching and we're running after you to keep up. So thank you. I am Brian Rose. My family and I, we are disciples.